Every year, the Goliaths of World Sailing gather in Porto Cervo, Sardinia, to take part in a unique spectacle. The Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup pits the largest and most technologically advanced race yachts on the planet in direct competition. The event is an annual pilgrimage and has been hosted by the yacht club Costa Smeralda since it first began in 1980. This location offers the perfect blend of waterways, littered with pristine islands, combined with breeze powerful enough to bring the best out of these sailing thoroughbreds. Massive yachts like Nilea, Visioni, Saudade, and Hetairos, in all, 45 giants battling it out in a clash of sailing titans. Maxi yachts have always represented the leading edge of an ongoing evolution in design, construction, and materials technology, a constant search for improvements where size equals speed. You want to have the fastest boat. The bigger you build it, the bigger the chances that you're first boat home, the more extreme you go in, in constructions and uh, keel systems, and I think that's the most interesting part of a race. The first Maxis were Whitbread Racers, a new breed built from the 1970s to sail around the world. Maxis 15 to 20 years ago were restricted by the waterline length so that the top speeds that they would be going would be perhaps uh, in flat water somewhere around 16 knots. Our top speed in flat water 25 knots and, and that's a heck of a difference. A boat like this goes probably like four or five knots quicker on the beat and downward it goes triple the speed so that is something yeah, really really amazing for me that just how much speed designers actually have brought out of these boats. The revolution has been the wholesale use of carbon, which has come a long way since being applied by Thomas Edison as a filament in light bulbs. The biggest technology, what is, what is really great for these boats, is that, that they're able to build them now in carbon fiber. So the boat, uh, first of all, gets way lighter. Weight is an issue because as soon as the boat gets heavy, the performance goes down. And that is just one of these things all the owners want. They want to go as fast as possible. It really starts with our sails are being built of carbon, so they're not breaking. And so the next weakest link might be the halyards and the ropes they're using now, the fibers they're using there aren't breaking either. The loads are high, so if there's any wave action, that's when you just gotta step back and really be careful. One of the leading breakthroughs has been the application of carbon in rigging, primarily to save weight. From 50 foot upwards, the gains are big. And the, the bigger the boat, the bigger the gain. You know, on, on some of these big boats, you can save tons, 10 tons or even more on just on the rigging and that's what, what turns into speed. But it's only recently that designers have honed in on how much extra speed can be gained by altering the shape of the rigging. In racing boats the most important factor is windage because the, the windage of, of rigging is tremendous. The drag of a round cable versus um, uh, an airfoil shaped mast is about the same. On any race boat, you, you want to reduce the drag of your rigging because you're saving minutes. With each breakthrough comes new opportunity in a never ending search to improve on the competition. So every time you go to a certain limit and the way the boat is being handled, you, you, re, you go back to the drawing board, you go back to the engineering office and you try to figure out what is the best solution and then the lightest solution is different solutions. But there is no real limit. Maxi yachts push boundaries both off and on the water, and when Mistral conditions tear through the aptly named Bomb Alley, the teams are in for a white knuckle ride. All four classes lining up to do battle in a 24 nautical mile coastal race. In the Maxi Racing Division, a David versus Goliath battle is on the cards between Highland Fling at 25 meters and the pan European team aboard the 30 meter long Esmit Europa one of the world's fastest and most advanced racing yachts, always in pursuit of improvement. Kar je meni najbolj všeči na jezim in tolo pa dva, je vsekako hitrost, ki jo dosegamo, to je res edinstvena, maksimalna dosežena hitrost, je bila 38 nautičnih milj, to je nekaj posebnega. Druga zadeva, ki mi je na jezim in tolo pa dva, zelo všeči je perfektnost ekipe, uigranost ekipe, pravilne odločitve. But in Highland Fling, Esmit Europa is up against a dangerous opponent, 
a Wally hybrid capable of taking the handicap contest to her larger rival, particularly in the waters of Porto Cervo. I uh, specified to the designers, Reichel Pugh, that uh, this boat was meant to win in Porto Cervo on a coastal race in heavy wind. Our main competition is Esmerit Europa, and th this year, for the first time, we feel that we can race against them and probably beat them. The day produces epic sailing, the conditions pushing boats and crew to their limit. Irvine Laidlaw proves his claims were more than just talk, while Esmet win on the water, Highland Fling revel in the conditions and take the handicap honours. In the racing cruising division, Danilo Salsi's DSK Pioneer Investments celebrate an opening day win, as does Philip Balkan with Nelea in the Supermaxis. Whilst Klaus Peter Offen's team aboard Y3K make the perfect start in their bid to win the Wally Crown for the third year running. The event also includes the Mini Maxi Rolex World Championships. The favorite, Nicholas Zenstrom's Ran. Fresh from victory in the Rolex Fastnet race and back to defend their world champions title after narrowly ousting Allegre in the final race last year. This year we're racing against the boats that we've been racing against before, so we know the boats quite well. The boats, I think, which is the one to look after the most is probably Allegra, which is consistently sailing very, very well. And I'm sure they're hungry for this title as well because they almost had it last year. Allegre, though, is also enjoying a fine season, including taking a win at the inaugural Rolex Volcano race. I think uh, we're the underdog here. Um, ran on the occasions uh, we've met this year has beaten us, and Jetu and the Giralia beat us, so it is, it is pretty tight, so uh, we've got a, a big hill to climb. Ran and Allegre will be pushed hard by Shockwave, returning to Mini Maxi competition under the new ownership of the US's George Sagalaris. Hot on their heels will be Sir Peter Ogden's 60-foot Jetu. In the right conditions, they are more than capable of outwitting their larger competition on handicap. The crew lineup includes America's Cup tactician, Brad Butterworth. This year, you know, there's about four really good boats. Uh, we are I'm sailing on G2, which is the smallest of them, a 60-footer. It'll be a hard, hard fleet to win, but it's a uh, and it's windy, and, you know, the crew's got to be working hard. Anything can happen. But it's Ran who lead the Mini Maxis almost from start to finish on the opening day, proving already they're going to be a tough act to beat. Turning heads in Porto Gervo is a brand new maxi which evokes the spirit of a bygone era in sailing. At 115 feet or 35 meters, Firefly combines both the elegance and sailing prowess of the J-Class, famous for their iconic sweeping bows and use in epic America's Cup contests. Launched in May, Firefly is the first of the F-Class 1 designs. From the drawing board of Hoek Design and built at Klassen Shipyards in Holland, She's the inspiration of an owner seeking to produce a new racing class with a modern flair, whilst echoing the look of yachts that were developed in the 1930s. It all started with the Jays, uh, a lot of history, and I don't think there's any denying to the fact that they are absolutely beautiful boats. This is a, the next step to the, to the Jays, I think. The idea of the owner was to have a, a, a beautiful, classic looking boat, but with a modern uh, the modern aspect of today's sailing. So the boat looks like a classic boat, but it has a, has a keel, has a bulb, a carbon rig, which is actually just built for racing, but looks like a, like a classic. Built for an owner with exacting standards and firm ideas about aesthetics, Firefly is all about form as well as function. With a hull built of aluminium, both on deck and below, she's a racing boat, but packed with classic design touches. The idea of the owner is, uh, well, he's very much into, into shapes and details, into the looks of everything. So what he desired was a, a feminine lines with a masculine performance. Instead of going for something that is already existing, 
he, he decided to opt for something like this. A modern boat and with a, with a classic look. 80 years on, the J-Class has evolved into an icon of sailing. But whilst the F-Class is brand new, Firefly's classic lines and elegance mean she's sure to share the same destiny and be remembered for years to come. The design of Firefly is based on history, and it would be absolutely wonderful if in 50 years these boats will still be around and, uh, and still people think of, of this boat as being absolutely beautiful, like uh, everyone is still thinking about the Jays. The maxi yacht Rolex Cup has always taken place on the island of Sardinia, which, because of its strategic location, over the centuries has suffered countless invasions. Every year in September, in the small village of San Salvatore, one of those attacks is remembered, but as a famous victory rather than a defeat. La Corsa degli Scalzi, the Barefoot Run, is an annual reenactment of a frantic rescue mission undertaken four centuries ago to save the statue of San Salvatore from Moorish attackers. Arrubavano i bambini e le belle donne e si erano spinti sino a questo villaggio dove stava la statua del Santissimo Salvatore. Si accorsero i pescatori e i contadini, i quali chiamarono dei rinforzi e riuscirono a cacciare via il nemico e a mettere in salvamento la statua del Santissimo Salvatore. Questa corsa ricorda quel gesto, quindi viene riportata la statua del Santissimo Salvatore processionalmente e di corsa e poi viene riportata per, per che sia per tutto un anno nella pieve di Santa Maria. Legend claims that the dust from the barefoot runners made the Saracen think they were facing a powerful army and turned away in fear. Ever since, it's become one of the most important days on the town's calendar. But the race was nearly lost during the World Wars due to a lack of participants and was only saved by the actions of the village elders. In the when they were small, they didn't understand. Then, with the passage of the years, it's more an honor to participate than anything else. L'anno prossimo ritorneremo a correre e sarà un'altra sofferenza ma un'altra soddisfazione. Sono 800 giovani che corrono scalzi, che corrono tra le stoppie, che corrono in mezzo ai sassi, che se ne ritornano a casa con i piedi doloranti. O c'è una motivazione profonda, vera, oppure non c'è molto da stare allegri. È un qualche cosa che richiede il sacrificio e il sacrificio presuppone sempre un qualche cosa che dà un valore a quello che si compie. The sacrifices the teams must make on day three may not be as painful, but the challenging mistral conditions will demand every ounce of the sailors' endurance and dedication to their sport, as the Maxi, Super Maxi and Wally classes embark on a 36-mile coastal adventure. After losing the initial encounter to their smaller opposition, Highland Fling, Esmet Europa opened the throttle and even the score, setting the scene for a fight to the finish between the two rivals. In the Wally division, Y3K take win number two, meaning she leads Magic Carpet of Great Britain by three points and is closing in on a third straight-class win at the Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup. In the Maxi Racing Cruising Division, Brian Benjamin Zagir is enjoying a private battle with Danilo Salsi's 27-meter DSK. Aguirre evening the score and moving to within a point of her larger rival. In the Mini Maxis, Ran continues her good form, edging out ahead of the competition with two wins from three Windward Leeward races, while Sir Peter Ogden's Jetu trumps her larger rival, Allegre. Just half a point separating them after a total of four races. And in the Super Maxi division, size is everything. The two largest are fastest around the course on day three, the 147-foot Visioni and Albert Buell's marginally larger Saudade. It's Hitairos, though, who steal the show, claiming the race on handicap. 
But leading the Super Maxis overall after two days is Nelea, owned and helmed by Philip Balkan. Competing in the Super Maxi division is the brand new classic sloop, Anagene. Constructed in the Netherlands and only launched in January, Anagene was designed with a nod to tradition. Ostensibly built for luxury cruising, she's still able to hold her own on the racetrack. But the team are taking a different approach to their week's racing in Sardinia. Well, we like to sail the boat ourselves with, with our friends. So we come in two or three days before the race started and train everybody on his own position. And it works that way. And the owner, he's behind the wheel. Everybody knows his position. So uh, we don't have too much uh, professional crew. Obviously, she's quite a different boat from all the others that are here competing. And the idea for Anagen basically is it's all about uh, friends of the owner coming on board, going sailing in a wonderful, beautiful environment in a serious professional match, but trying to do that in a safe and controlled way. Uh, we know that we're not going to rank anything like all the really serious race boats here, but at the end of the day, we want to be able to take part and uh, give a really great thrill to uh, the owner and his friends. Anna Jean is the brainchild of Dutch property developers who decided to forego the usual practice of commissioning a yard to build their vessel, instead deciding to tackle the project themselves. The process itself is, uh, is a big part of the fun, the process of building a boat. You've got all your own ideas about all the details in the boat. And uh, if you start building your own boat, you want to materialize all these details. It's a fun process, and, uh, and, and you secure that you get the boat you really want. Our whole concept is a spirit of tradition yacht. So um, she's primarily a classic looking boat, but with all the advantages of a modern boat. So we end up having uh, beautiful, elegant lines, a lot of varnish, a lot of stainless steel to give it that kind of classic feel. It's been really a wonderful experience to, uh, to see that come to fruition. Sardinia has always hosted beautiful yachts in the Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup. The island renowned for its natural beauty, a sailor's paradise peppered with hidden bays and small islands. But it's from the water that Sardinia truly comes into focus. It's sempre stata un mare ricco, anche per sentito dire. Quindi il pescatore viene attirato da. Poi nel caso mio si è praticamente verificato il discorso che ho trovato una donna della quale mi sono innamorato, ho avuto due bambine e quindi mi sono fermato proprio. È una terra che mi, mi, alla quale mi sto affezionando molto perché è una terra ricca, c'è tutto. C'è tutto, in Sardegna c'è tutto, non manca niente. C'è il pesce, c'è la, 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 la campagna, il bestiame, c'è la montagna, c'è il mare, c'è tutto praticamente, è una un'isola completa, cosa che magari non si può trovare in altri posti dove o c'è solo il mare o c'è solo la montagna o, o, o via dicendo. Il mare della Sardegna è una cosa che affascina e, e qualcosina dà, quindi lo rispetto e, e se non ce l'avessi mi mancherebbe. The final day and the Mistral has at last abated, meaning the deciding races will play out in light winds. All week, Esmit Europa and Highland Fling have been separated by mere seconds on handicap, Esmit needing all of her speed advantage to stave off her smaller but high caliber opponent. Once again, Esimit Europa wins on the water, but conditions on the day allow Highland Fling to eat into Esimit's lead. Irvine Laidlaw's team claiming the race victory by four minutes on handicap, enough to turn the tables on her larger opponent and, against the odds, take the series. Esimit Europa is a very, very serious, very good boat, very well crewed, very well run. And to beat a boat of Esmeralda's quality is, is very, very difficult indeed. And for us to, to beat them, um, while well, last year we weren't anywhere near them, is a great thrill. The finish is just as tight between Brian Benjamin Zagir and Danilo Salsi's DSK Pioneer Investments. Tied on points going into the final race, the winner will take all. The pair remained locked in stride around the course. Aguirre winning on the water, but once ashore, 
DSK take their handicap victory and the series by a matter of seconds. È una vittoria importante per il nostro team perché è la terza volta che facciamo questa regata qua a Porto Cervo, ma è la prima volta che la vinciamo. E due anni fa l'abbiamo persa per un secondo, oggi l'abbiamo vinta per due secondi. There are more firsts in the Wally and Supermaxi divisions. Philip Balkan's 112-foot Nilea finishing a massive 14 points ahead of her nearest rival in her Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup debut. Whilst Y3K make history, taking the Wally crown for the third straight year, a unique achievement for Klaus Peter Offen's team. Well, first of all, you, you need a good boat, which most of the racers have. You need a good crew, which many of the boats have. Maybe also a little bit of experience and sometimes a little bit of luck. And I think we also had the luck this year again. In the Mini Maxi contest, Ran go into the final day with a commanding five-point lead, on current form, virtually assured of victory. George Sakalaris's team aboard Shockwave demonstrate they're a future force to be reckoned with by winning the first of two windward leeward races. But in the final race of the week, there's no containing Zenstrom and Ran, clinching the series their second successive triumph in the Mini Maxi Rolex Worlds. We came here this week to defend our championship title from last year and uh, we were quite focused on that and um, we pulled off a very good series and uh, had a, you know, we sailed very well and, and managed to win it back. So we were very pleased with the way we sailed, the way we managed the whole competition. With close finishes across the classes, the 2011 Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup draws to a climactic close. 45 of the world's largest and most technologically advanced yachts have demonstrated yet again the sheer power and majestic spectacle that Maxi Racing provides. The event returns to Porto Cervo in 2012, where the rivalries will resume in another epic clash of sailing's titans. Next time on Spirit of Yachting, the New York Yacht Club Invitational Cup presented by Rolex where sailors from around the world converge on the waters of Rhode Island to do battle. <laughs>